And fantasy, of course, is all about invention, and invention is the realm of the artist. It's that time of year again, Halloween. So today I would like to talk to you about the witch, one of the most overly romanticized fantasy figures in Western culture, whose historical roots, however, reflect a deeply traumatic episode in the history of women's lives. This period, roughly from the late 15th century to the 17th century, also produced some very important and beautiful works of art that have played a key role in how we visualize witches today. This iconic print from around 1500 by the German superstar of the Renaissance, Albrecht Dürer, basically established the pictorial tradition of witches in Western art. We see an old woman with sagging breasts who is flying backwards on a goat. In between her legs, she's holding a distaff dangerously close to her genitalia. On the left in the corner, we see a puto, one of those chubby cherubs, who is standing on its head. This is a reference to the fact that they thought that Witchcraft was an inversion of the normal ethical and religious codes. And this is why we see the, the witch flying backward on the goats. And this is why we see her long wavy hair blowing in one direction, whereas the long uh, wavy hair, the, the thick fur of the goat is blowing in the other direction. And this is also why, as a joke, Albrecht Dürer himself inverts the D in his own monogram. It's the world upside down. Ten years later, Dürer's student Hans Baldung Green created this spectacular woodcut in which he reused Dürer's motif of the witch flying backward on the goat. He went further though, because he decided to depict the witch's Sabbath, which was then thought to be a gathering, a nightly gathering of witches, during which they were thought to fly on animals or on broomsticks, during which they were thought to copulate with the devil. In fact, the goat is an age-old symbol of lust and also the, the embodiment of the devil, and in which they were thought to concoct ways to harm men. Here you see uh, sausages. This is a very clear reference to the mill genitalia and therefore to castration, which was a real fear at the time. Now, up until this image, descriptions of the Sabbath only existed in books in written sources, most notably the book called The Witch's Hammer from 1487, which was essentially a handbook on witchcraft for prosecutors and judges. So for that, Hans Baldung Green had no other image but the text, so he could use his fantasy. And of course, fantasy is, is invention, and invention is the realm of the artist. Now, as an art historian, I find this image mesmerizingly beautiful. I also find it rich with invention, with skill. Because here we have these witches who are beautifully organized in the composition, and they're, they're sitting amidst bones and skulls and the sausages, and they're flying, and there's so much going on, but it's also compact and it's balanced. At the same time, there's this force um, with which the steam coming out of this pot here in the foreground is, uh, is, is blowing out all these horrible things, the debris and the frogs and just nasty stuff. I find this just so incredibly beautiful to look at. But as a woman, as a person, I find this image deeply troubling because I know that the descriptions of the Sabbath in these books were based on so-called confessions of real-life women who were tortured severely and then drowned or burned. And I also know that this particular image played a huge role in the popularization of this terrible nightmare. After all, you can't unsee an image. Images are powerful. And now we're going to leave this beautiful library and go to the galleries to look at a painting that was obviously influenced by this print. And for that, we're going to wear a face mask. This painting from 1526 by the Amsterdam artist Jacob Cornelis van Osana depicts an Old Testament story called Saul and the Witch of Endor. Now in this story, the Witch of Endor has a small role and she is more of a psychic or a medium. That story in this painting is relegated to the background. 
what the artist was really interested in is depicting a Sabbath, so a contemporary witchcraft scene, the way he knew from prints like we have just seen. So on the left we're here we have the Witch of Endor. She is the old hag type with the hanging dress. We know her from Dura. She's sitting in a magic circle surrounded by owls and holding and lighting candles made of human fat. In the meantime, she's looking in a spell book with uh, gibberish symbols. On the right here, we have other witches uh, who are performing uh, the Sabbath. So that's now, we now know what that looks like. We have one who is flying on a skull. We have one who is sitting on a, uh, on a goat. And here, this lady in blue here is barbecuing a sausage, which we now know is a reference to the male genitalia and therefore to castration. In the 17th century, in the Dutch Republic, witch hunts had almost ceased to exist. But the interest in magic was still very much present, as it is today. In this virtuoso engraving by the Haarlem artist Jan van der Velde from 1626, here in two impressions, the witch is a young, full-breasted lady with a, smite, a slight smile on her face. And the demons in the fire are less threatening and more comical than in the German prince. The nightmarish reality of witch hunts and witchcraft had become pure fantasy. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy the Witches of the Rijksmuseum. Happy Halloween, everyone. <laughs>